there's a word, a subject, a, a topic of interest that I think people don't know as much about as they should. Okay. It's all about isotopes. You remember the periodic table of elements, that mysterious chart of boxes that hung in the front of the room all year in chemistry class? Yes. There's a sequence of elements beginning with hydrogen right. and they get sort of heavier and heavier and heavier. Right. And they each have a number. So hydrogen is number one, helium is number two. So we're not just numbering them, that is the count of protons in their nucleus. Right. Who's got 12 protons? Who's got six protons? There is an element and only one element that has that many protons in the nucleus. There you go. Some famous ones, carbon has six protons. Six protons. Oxygen has eight protons. Uh, I left one out. Nitrogen has seven protons. Okay. Uranium has 92 protons. Okay. When the periodic table of elements was being discovered, there were gaps. So you knew exactly what to look for if you were missing an element. Look for the one with 39 protons. Go, go back to the lab. It's like a... Uh, a chemical Lego set. <laughs> it just You just put it in a slot, click, clicks right in, and you move on. And so we have found 92, quote, natural elements in the universe, one through 92. Hydrogen right on up through uranium. And we have another, how many, up to 118 now, going beyond uranium. We made those in the laboratory. Mm. You, you think you, you can play God, sir? <laughs> is that so? You're just making elements now? The answer is, frankly, yes. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> so these are the protons, and they're immutable. And, uh, what I mean is, if you take away a proton, it's no longer that element. It's the other element. Right. If you add a proton, it's now a different element. Wait a minute. Protons all have the same charge. Hmm. They all have positive charge. So what does it mean to cram them into the nucleus of an atom if left to their own devices, they would what? Oh, man. They, you know, it's, they'd be the real housewives of New Jersey. <laughs> that's, that's, what the, that's what they'd be. Get out of here. Get out of here. What you? Ah, ah, flip the table. Ah. So what holds them together? Well, there's a whole other force of nature called the strong force. Fundamental force of nature. Fundamental force of nature. And it's propagated by a particle called the gluon. Right. Aptly named, I might add. And this happens by the presence of neutrons in the nucleus. Right. So neutrons tamp down the resistive forces and they act as a sort of a glue for the nucleus. Unless you're okay. a Martha Stewart atom, in which case, it's a hot glue on. <laughs> that was terrible. They all can't be winners, like you said. <laughs> exactly. You know, I would say Martha should not have gone to prison for that. I should have. So hydrogen in its native state only has one proton. Right. It doesn't need a neutron. Right. To hold anything together. So native hydrogen is just one proton and then one electron on the outer side. Oh, by the way, in a red-blooded atom, they have as many electrons as, as protons. So they're electrically neutral. Right. Okay. So uranium would have how many electrons? As many as it has neutrons. No, no, as many as it has protons. I mean protons. <laughs> protons. So how many is that? Um, I don't you know. You don't remember? I said it. 92. 92, exactly. 92. So, so matter is generally neutral for this reason. Okay. Hydrogen is happy. Let's go to helium. Right. Helium has two protons. Right. Its native state has two neutrons. Okay. Suppose I force hydrogen to accept a neutron and I cram it in there, okay? I can do that. Now I have what's called heavy hydrogen. Heavy hydrogen. It has a whole word that we have for it. It's called deuterium. Oh. You might have heard the word deuterium. Do tell, what, is, what does deuterium do? You can make a water molecule out of deuterium. H2O, if one of those hydrogens is a deuterium, then it's D-H-O. Is that heavy water? That's heavy water. Heavy water. You might have heard of heavy water, yeah. yeah. You can add two neutrons to it. Okay. We have a word for that. Obese water. <laughs> it's called tritium. 
tritium. Point is, when you do this to an atom, adding neutrons, or possibly subtracting neutrons, if it has stuff it won't miss, you made an isotope. Aha. Uh -huh. So deuterium and tritium are isotopes of hydrogen. Of hydrogen. Let's go to carbon. Carbon has six protons in the nucleus. Right. So red-blooded carbon would have how many neutrons? Uh, six. Six. And it'll have six, six electrons. electrons. Carbon. Bada bing. Okay. Oh, wait a minute. I can add two neutrons to it. Ooh. So now it has six protons and now eight neutrons. Add those two numbers to get. What do you got? It's 14. 14. <gasps> Carbon 14. Carbon 14. As in carbon 14 <laughs> dating. Yes. Yes. You know, someone should make a carbon 14 app, a dating app. That'd be, uh. be kind of cool. <laughs> that'd be kind of cool. So that's an isotope of carbon. All right. It turns out carbon 12 is stable. 12 is six protons, six neutrons. It's stable. Right. You add two neutrons, it's not stable. Right. It will decay. In a half-life. In a half-life. And the half-life of carbon-14, if I remember correctly, it's around 5,000 years, which means after that amount of time, half of the carbon-14 is no longer there. Right. It has decayed. And then you wait another 5,700 years, half is gone again. Right. You wait another 5,700, it's half a half of a half is an eighth. Right. So you keep doing this, and you know what it does? It gives you access to dates across all of recent human history. Mm. From when we were in caves, up through recorded history, right on up back through 1,000 years ago, 500 years ago. So it's very useful for dating life on Earth. Some carbon that's in your body is carbon-14. So how, how do we end up with the carbon-14 in our bodies? So carbon in nature, add carbon-13 in there too. So carbon-12, stable. Carbon-13, stable. There's not much of that. Carbon-14, unstable. Unstable. Okay, so in the environment, carbon-14 would normally just disappear, except there are sources of carbon-14 from cosmic rays from space. Space rays? Space, space, space rays. rays. Space we got, rays. We got space rays. Okay. You know what else boosted carbon-14 levels? What? The nuclear tests that went on in the 1950s and 60s. Ah. So here's what happens. When you are alive, you uptake that native amount of carbon-12, 13, and 14 into your body. Okay. And it stays at that level, okay, until you die, because then you stop ingesting more carbon there's carbon in all food you eat basically right all food that has any nutritional value has carbon in it okay the moment you die you no longer refreshing the carbon and the carbon 14 then decays and then that's when we can figure out the timing correct the nuclear tests have interfered with some of the baseline measurements of what's going on in, in our environment uh, so you have to sort of get get the nuclear tables together with the tables of nature in order to figure out what the starting levels were for life forms that were exposed to it. We've actually put the finger on the scale. <laughs> the thumb on the, on the, the scale. The thumb yeah, yeah. on the scale but with, the, with the nuclear test. The, yeah, with the, the nuclear product. test. Anyhow, I was just, you know, chewing the fat here with isotopes. I love and, it. And, you know, they're, they're fun other part of what's going on on the periodic table of elements. Yes. And one other thing, hydrogen has one proton and helium, remember, has... Has two. And helium in its native state has a total of four nucleons, two protons, two neutrons. Right. And it's stable. Okay. It turns out there's that's, that's called helium-4 because it's got four particles in its nucleus, two protons, two neutrons, helium-4. If you take away one of the neutrons... Right. Guess what you have? Um, helium three. Yes, <laughs> helium three. Helium three. Now, here's what's cool about helium three. Helium three is one of the particles ejected by the sun, right? And it gets embedded into the lunar surface. We might have talked about this we in another did. show. So helium three is yet another isotope, but now that's one with one fewer neutrons instead of more neutrons than what was there before. Nice. All right, this has been another explainer from Star Talk. Chuck, always good to have you. Always a pleasure. Neil deGrasse Tyson. Keep looking up.